hearts and lives. And you be responsive. If God speaks to your heart and you want to stand up and raise your hand, you'll not be out of order here. If you want to kick up your leg, if you can't, that'll be all right. I tell you, if you want to shout, that'll be all right. If you want to run, just run in the same direction I am. I don't want to run into you. Amen. I tell you, I just want to have a good time in the Lord. I'm glad I'm saved today. It wouldn't be hard for me just to take off right now and preach just thinking about what Jesus really done for me when he died on the cross of Calvary for my sins that I could have life and have it more abundantly. So I'll tell you what, we are, there ought to be a smile on every believer's face today because of what Jesus has so wonderfully done. Today is going to be a commission in service after a while, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I'll tell you, it, it, it's, it's more than just uh, saying I'm going to work for a week. It's more than just saying I'm going to just be a part of, of, a, of a little old vacation Bible school. Listen, right. it's about reaching out to boys and girls, men and women, and telling them of the love that you've already got that Jesus gave to you. Oh, listen, he loves you. He loves you more than anybody else could ever love you. He's reached out, and I'll tell you, just he was the satisfying sacrifice to the Lord God himself. We were separated from God. We needed somehow to be brought back uh, before God, and he became the propitiation, uh, the atonement, if you will, that satisfying sacrifice. He couldn't just do it with just a, a, a lamb or a goat or a bull. Every year he said the lamb, he said the blood of lambs and goats and bulls can't satisfy. I tell you, I'm glad to tell you today that there has been a satisfying sacrifice. That my Savior and your Savior, well, glory. Some of you know that. I'm excited about what Jesus is going to do. I promise you, my God, give me time every while. Well, somebody say amen, will you? I do. I don't want this to be a monologue. I want it to be a dialogue. I want to be a dialogue. If I was in a black church, I wouldn't have this problem. Glory to you, man. I remember being in a service one time and said, let me tell you what Jesus did. And some of the women said, tell us, preacher. <laughs> Amen. I want to know. Amen. Well, glory. Amen. I can't settle down here. Preach it. Well, those of you that's visiting, if you think this is a little choir, just hang around. <laughs> I hope it just kept some out of sorts today. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Just does his thing. So uh, we are honored for you to hear. And, and of course, uh, we've had our end on Awana's for, uh, for the year. But I'm going to tell you, Wednesday night is still Amen. a great opportunity in the midweek to come and worship. Would you just, and, and I tell you, if, if we'll find a way, I'll, I'll bring Brandon and every kid over. And, and, and take care of them on, uh, on Wednesday night. We'll find somebody. It, but I tell you, I, I think I, I think we're missing an opportunity yes. on Wednesday night. Amen. Not coming through the Sunday. I, I know there's a lot of things that go on through the Sunday. But I tell you, I believe we just took the time. We, we, I would just like to invite you just to take out. It'll, it's a refreshing time, a helpful time. Uh, and I want you to be a part uh, of our Wednesday night prayer meeting. So you come and be a part of that. Um, uh, we're going to, uh, in, on, on June the 5th, uh, the Roarks are going to be here as a family, and they're going to sing for us that Praise morning Lord. service. So if you will, start telling everybody you know, and we'll just have the house filled up. And, and uh, uh, we're looking for, uh, for Paul and um, Jared, you say it? And, uh, <laughs> And then we'll endure uh, Shane, but uh, <laughs> Shane, we love you. We thank God for you and for what uh, the work you're doing. And then, uh, uh, and of course, uh, last day of school for New Hope Christian School is this coming Wednesday. So uh, please pray for the year end of our school and pray for our upcoming school uh, event uh, uh, to come. And pray, pray for uh, boys and girls uh, that God would send them to our school. Um, if you, uh, if you would like to watch 
uh, our, if, if something happens, you have a family member that's shut in or somebody that can't watch, <coughs> if you want to catch any of our services on Ustream, uh, you can go to Ustream.tv and then uh, look on to uh, um, New Hope Carton and, uh, and then you can uh, look back at our previous services. So we, we, we want you that that's an opportunity for you uh, if you want to download those or look at those. Um, <coughs> And now we have youth announcements. Brandon, you come and give us a youth announcement. I never thought I would hear my dad say a website name correctly, but he is correct. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we actually also have our Ustream live feed on our website at newhopecorrington.com forward slash live stream. So you can also do that, and it will take you directly to uh, the live stream and also the videos that we have archived from the last uh, four or five months. Um, but for the youth announcement, we have a mandatory meeting as soon as church is over with today. Um, if you are planning on going on our mission trip, uh, even if you are not planning on going on the mission trip, uh, all youth from seventh grade and up, we need to meet. Um, I need to find out exactly how many of you are going if you are planning on going, I have to have your permission slip today. Uh, that will allow me to figure out how many people I have so we can go ahead and get our bus started and, and get the, uh, all the stuff together for that. Um, as well as you will see in your bulletin, we are going to be having date night next month. This is for everyone in the church. Um, we are going to be serving, the youth will be serving dinner and then we will have a movie here in the sanctuary afterwards. Um, I th tickets are gonna be $15, and I apologize, I do not have tickets with me this morning. I failed uh, miserably at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> bless you. Uh, but we will, be, we will start selling tickets next week for that, um, possibly even tonight. So we will have those tickets ready for you. Uh, they will be $15, uh, I think, it, does it say per person? Anybody know? say per person okay thank you it does say per person so, uh, and like I said we will be serving uh, dinner uh, that is yet to be determined uh, however if you would like to make something for our dinner uh, we would love for you to make something for us uh, if you are a lady in the in the church and you have a dessert that everybody goes crazy for I would love for you to bring it not for me because I'm on a diet remember uh, but please be in prayer for our youth. We are going on a mission trip, and I'm very excited uh, to be taking them on this trip and, and very excited for what God's going to do for them uh, and, and how much we can work for Jesus once we get there. Amen. Am I forgetting anything? Thank you. Amen. And I am amazed that he would look at me and ask me if he's forgetting something. <laughs> Um, on behalf of the school, I do want to do a couple of things here. We have awards day at the end of every school year, and we've had those. Uh, and there was a couple of people that the school said needs to be recognized uh, in the presence of the church for, for their work. Uh, and and uh, the first one is uh, Miss Wilma. Miss Wilma was very, very helpful to us in preparing one day a week for lunch during Amen. the course of the year. Man, what a great blessing she was. And so on behalf of the church, I think we ought to give her a big hand. So thank you. Amen. Not only did she provide food when she came in, but every Wednesday she came in with such a, uh, a warm, affectionate smile and a hug for everybody. Uh, and, and it just uh, made the day for all of the staff, and we certainly are grateful to that. We also uh, have one for Miss Holly Oswald. She's not here today. She's our PTF president and she did a phenomenal job this year and so on behalf of the school and the church we want to give that to her and and then uh, uh, this year we had a uh, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, our golf tournament uh, uh, cleared $17,000 and so we want to give the Lord glory for that. Very patient, uh, but very well organized and uh, did an awesome job. Miss Lisa Helton, Lisa, thank you yeah. for your labor. Come Amen. up here and let me give Amen. you Amen.
All right, are you ready to worship? Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I'm, I've already had a good time. I didn't know I could have this much fun in announcements, just thinking on Jesus while I'm doing it. So, uh, am, I, am I forgetting any announcements? Mark. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, since our bus ministry has been going on, we have breakfast for the children. If you'd like to be a part, taking a taking a Sunday a month or a Sunday, however many we get, if we get eight people, you'd only be doing breakfast once every two months. Uh, and and so if you would like to do that, there's a sign up there. If you say, hey, I want to be a part of that, uh, and then you can talk to Mary or talk to Gary about what what we generally uh, give for breakfast. I don't even know what they're serving for breakfast, but whatever you feel led and whatever you can bring in uh, would be extremely helpful. Thank you. All right, I know we pray, but let's stand and let's honor the Lord. Let's just take a moment and call out to the Lord in prayer. Brother Charlie Burnett, would you lead us as we pray? Lord Jesus. Tonight we're going to be having a, uh, a special service uh, for our graduates and a reception to follow. Brandon's going to be preaching to our graduates, so please uh, come tonight. If you'll stand back up again. <laughs> I thought y'all would be used to me by now, but you'll turn in your hymn books to page 139 as we sing.
praise the Lord.
I can see it in their eye. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. sharing life with one who's lost through his love our hearts can feel all the grief they bear they must hear the words of life only Commission and service. I want you to know that last year in our vacation Bible school here at New Hope, we averaged 120. We've seen two boys and girls saved by God's grace. I've often said this whenever it comes to vacation Bible school, and I, I don't care to throw a commercial in. A lot of times people worry about cost. But I want you to look over at your child or the child beside you, and you tell me what's it worth. What's their salvation worth? Amen. If we spend $10,000, if it wins a boy or girl to Christ, it's worth every penny. Amen. 
this is the first time that we've ever done commissioning, and now we're going to do the commissioning after, after that we hear a message. But the reason we're going to do it afterwards is because it's almost to me like you know when you went and took the, the Lord's Supper, and that that when you do that that, that we ought to reflect on ourselves and and and, uh, uh, and look at our hearts. Uh, he said not to receive it, uh, to take it worthily, and I'd say. Vacation Bible School is more than just one week of babysitting somebody's kids. It is more than just having to take off from work or to having to run straight from work to church and and uh, uh, be <clears throat> so upset, maybe of traffic, and then get here and be troubled. And at the end of the week, you just want to fall out. I understand that. I want to tell you what it's about is... <clears throat> It's about us being prepared to be used by the Lord Jesus Christ. For, for if you look, historical facts is this, that Vacation Bible School is the most effective soul winning tool that the church has in, in our generation today. It wins more boys and girls to Christ in that concentrated single week than we do throughout the rest of the year. To be honest with you, revivals don't do what Vacation Bible School does. It ought to do more, but I'm going to tell you, when it comes to just concentrating on effort to the lost, Vacation Bible School is what it's all about. And so I want you to be very prayerful. We had something at our golf tournament. It was called a board. It was called Friends of New Hope. And uh, the couple that's here today, Brother Mike, who's not just our director of missions, he's not just a preacher of the gospel, but he is a friend of New Hope. Amen. And I will say this, that his wife Amen. equally Amen. is a friend of New Hope. Amen. She has invested her life in our school. Amen. Their daughter was the principal here at our school. They have been a part of this church uh, for uh, probably uh, 10 years, close to it. And man, we are so grateful. I, I appreciate Debbie. Debbie is a, uh, she's a sage when it comes to our, our school. She, she uh, has probably forgotten more than a lot of us know about its operation. And we're so grateful to her for times that we even call on her and pick her brain and ask her questions. We appreciate her. But I'm going to say that right now, for this hour, uh, Preacher Mike Viles, our Director of Missions, uh, Brother in the Faith, and, and dear, dear friend of mine. What I love about Mike is, is that uh, uh, he's a friend no matter what the circumstances hold. When times is good and when times is bad. And sometimes, you know, if it takes him kicking me in the leg, get my attention. That's what a friend is. A friend will remind you. And I tell you, that we need accountability partners, don't we? We need folks that we can look at and say, where are you at? And buddy, I tell you, I'm glad. He's, he's a preacher's preacher. He loves his association. He loves the preachers of association. More than that, he's a man of God and he preaches the word. So I tell you what I'd like you to do. Let's give him a big new hope welcome and just let him know we're glad he's here today. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for those kind, kind words. I was thinking this morning, I pulled in the parking lot and had to look for a parking place. Of what a great work the Lord Jesus has done through the ministry of Mark Large. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean, this is what New Hope is supposed to look like. I just am so grateful for the great work that's ongoing here at New Hope, in the church, in the school, and in the hearts of God's people. So thank you, Mark, for giving us this time. I really want to thank him today for inviting me to a service where you're not serving ice cream. <laughs> I read in the bulletin you're having ice cream tonight, so thank you, Pastor, for uh, not letting me be a part of that. <laughs> uh, well, it's good to see you this morning, and we just thank God for this time that he's granted us to come out to his house. I come with other purpose this morning. I come to enlist prayer partners for our mission trip to Rio de Janeiro. I enlisted uh, Miss Donna. I'll tell you there's one thing about Donna. She's a praying woman. Amen. Yeah. 
And I did, I've got a lot of confidence in her prayer that she'll reach the throne of grace on Amen. our behalf as we travel. How exciting it was to hear Brandon leading the mission trip. And uh, I'm so grateful. Brandon, we want to partner with you as the association. And we'll be talking to you a little bit about that after the service. Turn with me in your Bibles this morning to the Gospel according to Luke chapter 5. And we'll read from God's Word. I'm already uh, expecting great things to happen here today. And I know there's one gentleman that needs to get right because Lisa's already told him how wrong he is this morning. So, Bobby, we're praying for you today, brother, uh, that uh, things will get well in your life. Let me share the thought with you we're, we're going to try and preach from this morning. Commissioned for fishing. Now, my daughter would love that type of language. Uh, Dawn's an English major, and she would tell me very quickly, Dad, it's not fishing, it's fishing. But I want to preach on commission for fishing this morning. I saw a wonderful bumper sticker not very long ago. It was on the back of a boat, and it said, my wife has said if I hook to this boat one more time, she's going to leave me. And then it was a pause, and then it said, man, I'm going to miss her. <laughs> Commission for fishing. Let me ask you a question as the body of Christ this morning before we read God's word. Don't raise your hand. Just answer this question in your heart. How many of you here this morning are directly involved with Vacation Bible School? How many of you indirectly are involved with Vacation Bible School? Now I'm going to ask you to do something for me this morning, and I hope this is an illustration that will fall through the floor. But how many here this morning, if you would please stand... How many of you here this morning have been saved in Vacation Bible School? Would you please stand up? How many this morning? One, two, three, four. Stand, remain standing, please, for just a moment. Now, I'm not going to try and call everyone's names because I just don't know all the folks that have stood up this morning. But I'm sure their hearts and their lives have been so radically changed by the presence of the Lord Jesus that they will never forget Vacation Bible School. How about introducing yourself this morning? Let's start right here. Janice. Janice. Go ahead. Right here. Thank you, Wanda. <laughs> Mark has brought out some wonderful truths this morning that VBS is the most evangelistic outreach in Southern Baptist churches today. James, sit down. The rest of you remain standing. How many in this church would say that we just don't need Janice? We just don't need her any, anymore. Wanda, you sit down. And how many might say the same thing about Wanda? We just don't need Wanda and Janice anymore. About 25% of our baptisms every year are due to Vacation Bible School and the evangelistic outreach. And what we say when we talk about doing things indirectly. We're indirectly saying we just don't need that. I don't believe it's indirect hearts that the Lord Jesus is looking to. You can be seated. I don't believe it's, it's indirect hearts that the Lord Jesus is looking for in use for Vacation Bible School, but I believe it's directed hearts with a directed purpose. Let's read from God's word, beginning in Luke 5, verse number 1. And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen 
were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into the ships which was Simon, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And as he sat down and taught the people out of the ship, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Watch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when he had... And when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were and all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all. And followed him. Amen. Debbie, take us to the throne, will you? Let me try and set the scene for just a few moments. Probably near the city of Capernaum, Jesus was once again preaching his own everlasting gospel. He delivered a sermon. I wonder how many people have taken the thought in this body of Christ and in this church today, well, this service is just not really for me anyway because it's a commissioning service for VBS. Jesus was preaching his gospel. The crowds had grew so great and so many people were pressing upon him that he asked Simon to uh, uh, get in the ship with him and to thrust out just a little ways from land that he might be able to speak to them. I couldn't help but wonder, what did he preach? What did Jesus say at this particular time? Now the Bible's silent. But I believe there's three things that our Lord always deal with when it's a message from God. Number one, it always reveals who He is. That He is the Christ, that He is the Son of God, and that there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved other than the name of Jesus. He always told his purpose of why he came. You remember the story when he entered into the house of the publican, Zacchaeus, when he said, For the Son of Man hath come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's always the number one priority, the number one mission of the Holy Spirit of God that reveals to us who Jesus is, and beckons our hearts unto him. And thirdly, the Lord Jesus, when he preached his gospel, he always left a congregation like this. How will you respond? This message from the Lord Jesus, the King of kings, the Son of God, the glory of God here at at the Sea of Genesaret this day, was like water on a duck's back to Peter and Andrew and James and John. This message just isn't for me. 
He can preach all he wants. I'm going to wash my nets. I'm going to do my own thing. And the content and the message must be for someone else. Can you imagine that? The crowd is gathered. The press is so great that Jesus goes out into the water. And, and, and Peter and James and John and Andrew neglect him. They neglect what he would say. Every time I've ever stood in the will of God, I have prayed, Oh God, speak. Speak to hearts, God. Amen. Change lives as only as you can. The response will be yours. I can't imagine being that nonchalant with the message of God. They were busy. It was a busy time. It was their livelihood. It was what they did best. But they neglected the sermon of the Lord Jesus. Is this message for you this morning? Is God speaking to your heart? I just don't believe that you can open up the infallible, inerrant Word of God and it doesn't speak directly to each of us. VBS. It's a busy time. I've never seen such a time when people are so busy and getting so little done. It seems like that so many things distract us that so many things will take us away. I, I'm not here to beat and to bash this morning, but we've gone from three weeks of revival to three days of revival. Many VBSs struggle just to have it a week any longer. Those five precious days that your pastor spoke of, directly or indirectly involved with VBS. Not only was there a sermon this day, but there was a summons. The Lord Jesus said to Peter after he preached his message, he said, let's go fishing. Lord, I fished all night. And now the morning's passed and we're in the heat of the day and this is the worst time possible to go fishing. But he said, launch out into the deep. Only two things Jesus commissioned these men to do. And listen to me under the sound of my voice this morning. I think it's the same two things that he asked of each of us. He said, launch out into the deep. And to let down your nets. Now nowhere in this passage do we ever read that Peter, James, and John, and Andrew launched out into the deep. What is it about fishing? Maybe some of you all can answer this. But sometimes when we stand on the bank, we want to see how far we can throw it out. And when we're on the boat, we try and get as close to the bank as we can. I've never understood that logic, but yet I'm guilty of it. Nowhere in this passage do you read that they launched out into the deep. I think the Lord Jesus is asking this this morning, just how far are you willing to go? Just how much are you willing to give? He said to them, he said, let down your nets. Lord, we pulled all night. This is the wrong time. This is, might even be the wrong place. This isn't our fishing hole, Jesus. And by the way, you being a carpenter, you're going to tell seasoned fishermen how to fish? Amen. Nevertheless, at your word, Jesus, uh -huh. yeah. I'll let down a net. Now how far and how much? 
I wrote an article some time ago, a few years ago, concerning VBS. After I'd heard this same statement at least a half a dozen times that particular year, when people began to, to, to talk to me like VBS was some kind of great burden, just that load that they couldn't carry. And I heard a lot of complaint that year. People would say things like, we're just spending too much. And our pastor and our director is just asking us to go a little too far. And my question then was as well as this morning, how much is too much and how far is too far? Don't we say things like this sometimes? We'll say things like, well, it's the least that I can do. Thank God he didn't feel that way about you and I. That it wasn't the least that he gave, but it was the very best that heaven had to offer. How far is too far and how much is too much? We almost reached our weekly budget with our tithes. We almost. One of the most saddest things that I can think of about VBS is when pastors... And VBS directors have to stand before the congregation and beg for help up until the last day. You ask me about going fishing, I'll get a little excited. And dear friend, if i got time, it won't bother me one bit to hook up with you and to take a day and go fishing. But let me tell you what I really love to do. You let Pastor Mark Large call me on the telephone and say, Mike, let's get hooked up. Why don't you just come and just preach and deliver the message of Christ? I'm telling you, I get excited about that, Mark. Because I went fishing Friday and a little bit Saturday, and you know what I call a minna. He was about as big as the minna that I had on the hook. But, oh, dear friends... When Jesus commissions and says, Lunch out into the deep, let down your nets, I get excited. Because I always wonder what man, woman, or boy and girl is coming into the net. Now there's a play on words right here. The Lord Jesus said, Let down your nets. And Peter said, I'll let down a net. The single. And that's the way we are sometimes. When God speaks to us in the plural, we always answer back in the singular. I think sometimes if we could only see for just a moment all the blessing that God has in store for us, we would run like children to the cookie jar. But let me say this. Peter talked about being about toiling. All night we pull, Lord. We're tired. We're wore out. That preacher's got so much going on, we can't do it all. That preacher's right trying to reach so many, we just can't reach them all. And he's asking for so much, we just can't give it all. Listen to me, dear friends. I don't know of anything I would rather invest in than the kingdom of heaven. Because it's what moth and rust does not corrupt, and thieves can't break through and steal it away. And our real treasure is in Him. In Him. I can't wait to get to heaven sometimes. I didn't have to wait for 6 o'clock yesterday afternoon for someone to call me. My sister called me from New York the first thing she said. She said, Mike, what do you think about all this? I said, it's foolish. And I said, besides that, Sherry, if he comes at 6, 7, 8, or 9, we're going to heaven. Sometimes I just can't wait to get there. I want to see Him. I want to see Him. Man, I just can't hardly imagine being in glory, Mark, and the Lord Jesus walking up and putting His arm around. To know the love of God, see Him in His presence in all of His glory. I want to see Him. Can you imagine getting to take a little stroll with Peter? What a fisherman he 
became. What a great man of God Peter is and was in this day. And to get to just lock arms with Peter and walk down the road with him. I'm talking on streets of gold. I can't wait. I can't wait. And then Jonah, that backslid preacher, that the fish caught him. I can't wait to meet folk like that. Mom, Dad, my little sister, folks that I miss and I've missed for such a long time. I can't wait. But you know what I think will be one of the greatest blessings of heaven? When someone walks up to me and says, You preached to me one day. You know that to me. I believe Jesus in my heart. I think that will be one of the greatest thrills of heaven. Oh, listen. Let down your nets. Not a net. Lunch out into the deep. Go as far as he'll let you go. Give as much as he's given to you. The best. Oh, Lord, we've talked. And let me say this. There's never a blessing without a burden. And there's never a blessing that is a burden. Now, if that's a plan of words, you just think about it. A burden. For, and I'll say this. I've said it many times. You're only good at what you have a passion for. You got a passion for fishing? You'll get good at it. You'll not be like me about to slip out of the boat and fall in the lake, cut your finger with the line and all these other things that happened to me yesterday. I thought, goodness gracious, if this is rest, I'm giving it all up. I'm going to go back to golf with Mark. Before I kill myself. We told. But nevertheless, Lord, have thy way. There was a summons. And I think he's summoning every one of us this morning. Every one of us. It's the old cliche and how true it is. If all it was is just to take us home to heaven, he would have done that when he saved us. But he's given us all those gifts, spiritual gifts, and blessings of God to better serve him with. Not only was there a summons, but then we look at their success. Let me say just a little bit about their carelessness. Have you ever noticed what most fishermen want to talk about? The one that got away. Man, you should have. I caught some fish. But you should have seen that and it broke my life. Or you should have seen, that reminds me of a story I heard a preacher told me one time, his name was Billy Carwell. He's done gone on to be with the Lord Jesus. He's in heaven this morning. Old Billy told me, he said, and he, he was just an old rough cut boy, one of the guys that I just loved to be around. And Billy said, and he took me fishing all the time. We'd go together. I usually had to carry all his tackle and his food and everything else for him, but we'd go fishing. And he, I didn't go with him one day. I couldn't go. He said, preacher, you should have been with me. He said, I caught a fish that weighed 10 pounds, 6 ounces. But it broke my life. <laughs> I said, Billy, how in the world did you know you caught a fish that weighed 10 pounds and 6 ounces? He said, because it had a set of scales on its back. <laughs> now, you fullbacks will get that a little later. <laughs> there was not only the summons and the sermon, but there was success. But it was, again, let me speak just about their carelessness for just a moment. We're only going to let down a net, Lord. We're not really going to go where you said for us to go. And what a careless action that these men took. Let me say this to every born-again child of God here this morning. We can't afford to talk about the work of God's work. We can't afford to talk about the one that got away. There's nothing that 
saddens my heart anymore for the lost to come in and the lost to go back out. Right. I don't think there's anything that breaks the heart of God anymore than for the lost to come in and then for the lost to go back out. There's two things about fishing that I've learned a, a little about. And number one is presentation. How you present the lure or the bait that you're using. Most of the professional fishermen, when you talk to them about their occupation, they always talk about presentation. What do I have to present, preacher? The Son of God. Deity that came robed in humanity. He that opened the eyes of the blind and made the lame to walk and the deaf to hear and raised the dead. He that walked up Golgotha's brow and bore the cross of Calvary for a sinner like me who stretched forth those loving hands that had touched so many to the cruel nails of the Roman Empire and was raised between heaven and earth that was buried, that died on that cross and was buried in a borrowed grave. But on that glorious first Easter Sunday morning rose again, ascended unto heaven 40 days later, There sits on the right hand of God to make intercession for all that would call upon Him. That's my presentation today. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't tell me we ain't got the right lure. Don't tell me we ain't got the right stuff. Listen to me, dear friends. He's all that He ever said He was. And He's all that I ever needed. And He's all that you need this morning. That's my presentation. The blessed Lamb of God. Presentation and the next thing is patience. Don't we give up too easy? I've just tried to get this mindset here lately. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to shut up. I don't want to give out. I don't want to burn out until he calls me away from here. I just don't want to give in. I just don't want to admit that the devil won. Listen to me, dear friends. When it comes to presentation, we as the, as the bride of Christ have copped out and we've said things like this. This world just has so much to offer. I think the, 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 the lure and the attractiveness of the bride of Christ outweighs anything that this world has to offer. Yeah, we just failed to get our priorities in place and exercise the patience that God has given us to reach this lost and dying world. Commission for fishing. That's what we are. The Bible said that they let down their nets and get bread. And so they got away. And then they called the other sheep together and they let down their nets. And the draw of fishes was so great that both of the ships were just about to sink that they had caught so many. And when Peter saw what the Lord Jesus had done that day, he fell down and sat at his knees. Can't you just see, Peter? Oh, depart from me, for I am such a sinful man. And this is what Jesus said Fear not. For henceforth ye shall catch men. There's a wonderful Greek word in the word catch. And the word is zagreo. Zagreo. 
And this is what it means. The same as to take captive or to take prisoner. It's the only time this word is used in the Bible in this particular way. Jesus said, you're to take prisoners, did you? Put your own. As a captive, as of a war. And dear friends, if you don't think it's a war going on today for the souls of our children and, I, and men and women, you better open up your eyes and take a look around. I want to conclude and tell you a story about a 17-year-old boy. I met the other day. Yes, his name is J.C. We had had Wednesday night services over at Clear Springs, and I had attended a Brazil meeting. It was... Satan was attacking our mission trip. Man, it was just one of those days. And I walked out, and J.P. was sitting. We had a couple of little brick halls, and J.P. was sitting there smoking a cigarette. Sweat was just pouring off this young man. He had his skateboard with him, and I just assumed he'd been riding his skateboard. Now, J.P., you could tell he wasn't no choir boy. Took one look at him. I walked right by him. And then I turned around. I said, young man, are you all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I said, is there anything I can do to help you? No, no, man. I, I don't think so. I said, how about a drink of water? JP said, okay. So I took him in the church. and He drank his fill of water and we came back out. And I said, J.P., if you don't mind, tell me where you go to worship. Where, where, do you, where do you go? And he told me, and I know of the place that he was talking about. And I said, well, J.P., I said, that's wonderful. And I shook his hand. I said, look, we've got a wonderful, I wouldn't take you away from your church. I said, but we have a wonderful youth department here, and, and you, evidently you live close by, so I'm going to invite you to come and be a part of our youth activity. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ted and I walked on to the car. We were about the last car in the parking lot, except for Miss Kim Thomas, who was there with us. And we were talking about real. Here comes JP, just fly. He said, Hey, man. He said, What's your name? I said, My name's Mike Vile. He said, Well, he said, I just thought it'd be good if I told my preacher who you are. I said, well, that, that'll be fine, J.P. I said, I, I know your preacher. I've known him for a long, long time. We talked on just a few minutes more, and I said, well, J.P., I said, it's just wonderful to know the love of God in Christ Jesus, isn't it? He said, man, I haven't felt loved in a long, long time. I said, J.P., you mind if I just share something with you? I said, J.P., God proved his love on the cross of Calvary. I give you yes, his son to die for sinners like me. I said, he died that we could have forgiveness of our sin, that no matter how great or how small they might be. And I said, he loves you. You're, you're wrong about this. There's always been someone that has loved you. This is what this young man has said to me that attended church. He said, I have never heard that. Wow. And my first response was, what in the world are they fishing with down there? What are they really after down there? For a 17-year-old boy to say he's never heard that before? I said, J.P., I'd love to pray with you. We'll pray right here in this parking lot, young man. He said, I don't smell too good, preacher. I said, I don't either. <laughs> I said, let's just pray, J.P. You ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you. Tell him that you believe in him. Tell him that, he, that you want him to be Lord of your life. He said, I'm a drug addict. I said, he don't care. He don't care, J.P. He just wants to come into your heart and change your life forever. Oh, J.P. grabbed hold of him. Man, I tell you, I've never smelled a sweeter aroma than come up from the parking lot.
parking lot of Clear Springs Baptist Church. Him and myself and Debbie and Kim, we joined together and prayed with that young man. I said, JP, how do you feel now? He said, I feel like I'm saved. We can't afford to let them get away. We just can't afford it. Let's get fired up, fueled up, loved up for VBS. Let's see how many more JPs we can catch. Come get a song. Pastor Mark, come with us. I'm going to turn the service over to Pastor Mark, but before I do, I want us to sing one verse of an invitation song. You could be here this morning, you know, but if you were to die, you'd go to hell. Oh, man, it's not speaking like that. Good news. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to go to that awful place. Oh, but you can come this morning. Know the love of God. Know the forgiveness of God. What's your response? How you will you respond this morning to the plea from heaven for Jesus said, Come up to me. Let's stand. pray for you today. I'm not going to come after you. I'm not going to pull after you. I'm just going to pray for you. Would you lift that hand? Say, yes, preacher. I know I'm lost. God bless you. Are there others? I know that if I were to die, I wouldn't go to heaven. Would you slip up that hand? God, you saw the hands. You know the hearts. Now, Holy Spirit, I pray through your power that you'll draw. That they'll say yes. They'll make that step of faith. Then, Lord Jesus, you fix it. You fix the broken heart, the broken life. You just fix it. For we trust in you who has never failed. In Jesus' name I pray. As this invitation continues, some of you lifted up your hand. This is your opportunity to come. Come right now as we continue to sing this morning. Would you come? Ask someone to come with you. Would you come?
Come on. suffering God and the patience of the church is waiting on you right now. Would you come?
The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of right. the You know what I thought about? I thought there's a lot of people who want to get up and say, y'all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I'm going to tell you right now, and I'll tell you, I have become the same way. All of us. Oh, yeah. From here, all the way to the back, all the way to the side. That's all right. Of us. Uh -huh. Amen. But Romans 6, 23 <laughs> says, but the wages or the payment for sin is death. That's right. Eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Oh, I, 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 I can't. I want to just sing one more verse. We've got to sing one more verse. And we'll go right on with the commission. And this is just all I... I I don't care if we run into the night service. I mean, Amen. Amen. This is worth every bit. And I tell you, what kind of payment did you put? Is it worth it? Worth it? Yes. How yes. far are you willing to go? All the way. How long are you willing to stay? All the way. How much are you willing? Now, all the way. Amen. Amen. Let's say something about this. One more time. God tugging at your heart right now. Listen. Powerful message that was delivered today. I wonder as we prepare and I look out through this church, and you know what I see? I, I look out here and I don't see people uh, that when I look out here, I see everybody as participants in Bible school. It takes the whole church. You don't, you know, we're, we're going to commission workers, but do you realize all of you are a worker? All of you will have some, some work. In VBS, this, whether you know it or not, you'll have an impact on what happens here at New Hope. I'm going to ask uh, uh, our director to come, uh, and, and when I call, when I call out you, and if you have a, and if you have an assistant director, I would like for them to come and stand right by you. So when I say this, I want everybody just to step out and come. Don't, don't, uh, don't waste any time. Uh, if you're planning on being a uh, a teacher in VBS or an assistant teacher, would you come and stand by these directors? Y'all can be seated for a minute if you'd like to. Uh, stay, stay right where you are. If you are, uh, if you're planning on, uh, uh, if you're planning on working in crafts, uh, I'd like for you to come. If you're planning on working in snacks, I'd like for you to come. If you're planning on being in the bus ministry for BBS, I want you to come. <laughs> if you're planning on being in the mission team, I want you to come. I'm trying to get everybody out. And if I miss, if you're, we, we have a term around here, it's called a floater. That's the person to do anything anybody wants them to do. Hey, man, there ought to be a lot of them floaters around here. I want you to come. Uh, and, and one of the great things in our Bible school is our music. If you're going to be a part of music, music is already here. Kendall's already here. And uh, that's some of my funnest times watching the kids learn in the music. Uh, I actually had names here, but instead of calling names... Uh, is is now here's here's what I want you to look at here I, and I want to do this because uh, I don't have no doubt in it but I want all all of you who who are going to commission pray am I missing anybody is there anybody that's standing out there saying you missed my job 
Or if there's somebody here that says, I'm going to do something in this VBS, would you get up and come down here? That's a challenge, isn't it? Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you, brother. Somebody else said, I've not been asked yet, but y'all might as well get used to it. I'm going to do something. I want all of the I want all of you to look at me. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins so that you could have eternal salvation, would you say these two words, I believe? I believe. If you know that you've accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, would you say, yes, I have? Yes, I have. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you can have great workers. But I believe with all my heart, if you're going to be commissioned in the work of God, you must know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. If you're going to be in that commission, Amen. these folks here, Bill, come up here. I know you're. I know you've got a lot going on, but you're going to be right in the middle of this. He don't even know how yet, but he'll be in the middle of it. He was Billy Bob last year. <laughs> and I appreciate him. I, I appreciate Bill, his his service for the Lord. And and I know, I know he's. I it goes. I know he's got a lot going on, but I know he's going to be. Part of this, a part of this vacation Bible school. And let me furthermore say this, church. As you look out here, will you say, if I ask you the question, that I will support my directors, my teachers, my workers, the best that I know how as a member of this body? Would you say, I will? I will. Amen. And then I want to just ask our workers one more question. Will you do your best to carry out the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, go ye out into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the teaching, teaching whatever I have commanded, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, will you be willing to do whatever it takes to present the gospel through Vacation Bible School? Would you say, I will? Amen. I know that I want to tell you when I thought about promoting this Bible school, when Sandy came to me and said something about a commission and service, I'm going to tell you just a couple of minutes ago, Hunter got commissioned. <laughs> he was commissioned. He was commissioned uh, to the call of God and to the work of the Lord Jesus, and all of these already have. But they but they have taken they have taken a desire in their heart to say, I'm going to do whatever I can to present the gospel to your children. Not only your children, but children we don't even know. Possibly men and women that will come to an adult class and, and, and hear the gospel of Christ. All oh, this, and you know, when I hear somebody, somebody says, well, so-and-so ain't saved, don't you know that we want them to be here? Amen. Amen. Don't you? I mean, I've often heard people say, well, I, you ought to see how they act. Well, you know, let me tell you, I don't care even if they act a fool. You know where they ought to be? They ought to be here. I mean, how do you teach them if, you don't, if they don't come? What was it that the man that was down there in the, uh, in the uh, uh, desert said, the eunuch, he said, uh, do you understand what you read? He said, how can I understand lest some man teach me? And that's what they're commissioned to do today. I want everybody to stand. And we're going to have a commission in prayer. And I'm going to ask our deacons to come forward. I always put them on the spot, but I don't care to. Come right on. I appreciate our deacons. And part of them is already up here. But I, I, as, as we come, uh, I just, what I'd like to do is I'd like for us as a body of Christ, uh, under the leadership of our deacons, they're going to pray over the people. Uh, we're going to pray together and ask the Lord Jesus to bless. Because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some boys and girls that have the opportunity to be saved this year. I want us to already pray that God would prepare the service that's going to be given, uh, that he had already put his hand upon those boys and girls who are coming to come, come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ during that service. And as our deacons are here, I'm going to ask Brother Mike to come right up here. And deacons, will you just come right up here and stand around him? Get right up here by the pulpit. And as our director of missions, and I'm going to tell you, he is a director of missions, and he leads uh, and, and directs our folks into going out across our land and across the world to win lost people of Christ. And I'm going to ask him to lead us in this commission in prayer. Brother Mike.
pray with me. Oh, Father, I want to thank you for Hunter, first of all. Thank you, Father, for the difference in your kingdom that was made here this morning. And I pray now, Father, use him. Let him grow in your grace and your knowledge and let him become the man of God, the servant of God, the child of God that you will have him to be. Father, I thank you for so many here at New Hope that are so willing to work in VBS. I thank you for the good leadership. Lord, I know Mark's passion for VBS. Because I've seen it over the years so many, many times for Sandy and for Gary and for others, God, that are standing here this morning that have just shown how much they really care. Yes, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you'll, you'll grant the need, whatever it might be, Father, to make it better. I pray that through your abundant supply of grace and mercies, that you will grant the need. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for, for those that are committed, for those that are so willing. And I pray your riches of blessings upon them. Yes. Bless them Father, help us not to get caught in the attitude of come here, but God, let us go there yes. and compel men and women and boys and girls yes. thank you, Father. to come in. Lord Jesus, how we praise you and how we thank you. Thank you for the life that you've given that we can share with others. Lord, just help us to give it away, to give away over and over again. For, Father, we know that's how we gain in the kingdom. I just ask again, Father, bless this Bible school. Bless all of our Bible schools, God, in the Midland and the Northern and wherever, Father, that people will gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. For we ask these things in the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. amen.